Ray's gonna say oh no, even Ray's gonna have something to fuck. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna be it's the it's the final battle, okay. right? How long how have you been enjoying your time with us so far? I must say it's been rather enjoyable. Really? At first I thought this excursion would be like my mercenary work in the past, walking along dis walking long distances and shooting away vermin that steps in our way. I'm happily mistaken. Hunting demons that are plotting to take over the world, that's straight from a fae tale. And I'm part of it. I like that he's just super bought in on this. He's just like, yeah, well, now that you're not flirting with my sister anymore, um, yeah, we're cool. And this, I get to shoot some really exciting stuff. <laughs> What's more, our targets are some of the toughest I've faced. Not quite as impressive as some of my past kills. But since I've already dealt with the worst, what more can you expect? You've dealt with stronger foes? Maybe a few. So yeah, I'm quite satisfied with our hunting. Though we could stand for some longer breaks between kills, a little rest and recuperation goes a long way. Dude, you've been in camp for six months. We already take many fucking breaks at camp. <laughs> I'm referring to the inns in the city. Soft beds, professional food, fresh company. Joking. Yeah, let's joke with Ray. Yeah. He's being friendly. He's being jovial. Yep. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ray. Ray who? Raise your standards a little bit, and uh, maybe we could date. <laughs> you don't like hanging out with us? No. In doses. <laughs> That's a good line. That's it? Let's cut this one short, shall ah! we? <laughs> well, because Ray is one of your romance options if you're, if you're a girl. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I also, part of me admittedly wishes that if we had played a girl, which we obviously weren't going to do because we needed to get those abs, um, but we could romance Karen, and then we would have gotten to see how Loren interacts with someone who is literally just dating her mom. Oh, so good. We're not playing through the game again. No. <laughs> no fucking chance. Not even a little bit. All right, Mirth. Not like most humans. Me? Really? Why? I seem different. I'm not sure why. I seem, well, nicer. Romance. Yep. Let's bring those hearts back. Yep. You must be very used to my kind behaving a certain way. That's a little bit cruel now that we already, like, she's already expressed that she's, like, into, like, monogamy and she's, like, she's going to be hurt if we toy with her heart. It's we're too not, late now. We're not toying. We're playing. We're a player. Ah, sort of unfortunate, but hey, that's not fair to you or to me. I wish I didn't have such prejudices. Can you forgive me? Of course I do. Hmm. That's feeling. I expect I always feel tense, even angry when speaking to you. That's how I always feel when speaking to someone of your kind. But I didn't feel that way with you. I feel like I can actually have a meaningful conversation with you. Like I can relate to you and trust you. If you... Are you a plant, perchance? <laughs> she shook her head. Well, I do have a root that grows in your presence. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we just, we just <laughs> fucking went for it. You know, I have changed my views on humankind. How do I do you mean that? That means a lot to me. I hope I can change your mind about humans completely. She can only smile for him. Yay. Karen. Karen! <clears throat> How could dark magic befall the Amazons? Uh, Mayo? <laughs> I'm speaking to myself. I apologize. The end. This is the first time that I've seen the Amazon so vulnerable. It will be alright. We're doing everything we can to cure them. The Citadel has always existed in isolation. And now our gates open regularly. We have opened ourselves to this sort of attack. Friendly. Yeah, we've been consist consistently friendly with Yeah, no, nah, she's... The, C the Citadel needs to keep its gate open. We have seen the world, and it is a wondrous place. But the Great Mothers. You are the Queen. Can't you change laws? 
I can. It's a lot of paperwork. No idea. All right. All right. So let's go to the other side. Dora! Actually, I want to leave camp and come back real quick. Okay. I want to see if we unlocked a scene with Mirth. All right. Let's run it back. Nope. Nope. All right. All right. Oh, hi again. Wow. Wow. Nothing. All right. Dark magic has stricken the Citadel. Our enemies are growing clever. They have learned our base of operations, and so our time of relative safety is growing short. Uh, are you prepared? I have been preparing every day since the old war was won. Hmm, while other people were being stupid, I studied the blade. Why, why do you carry a stick then? Arthritis! It's really sort of a thing. Really? Why? You killed Faust. Didn't you think he was going to remain dead? At first I think I did. But I was so maddened by the end, by, by what it took to win the war. I could not celebrate and live in peace. I was not allowed that. That's like the Gandalf thing too, right? Like, like... Nobody takes Gandalf seriously because he sees danger everywhere because he's just super paranoid all the time. I spent the days after returning to Grimoire studying Faust's kind in the realms. Days transformed into years and now 40 years have passed. Why couldn't you celebrate? What happened at the end of the war that bothered you so much? Remember his kid died? Yeah. My, my daughter, I lost my daughter. We were there, Remember? we went to we her did, bones. We did my we... side quest. It was... Was I supposed to celebrate having her ripped from me? I had to know what happened to her. We did. We just did that side quest. I had to find out what I could do to help her. She died. No, I cannot give up hope. What? The, what? 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 No, we... We, 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 we super did this. Yep. Okay, that's weird. Yep. All right. All right. Okay, Draco. 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 Draco bounced up and smiled for Saren as he always did. Oh, his ears are out. The smile for Saren thing is really weird. Oh, yeah, they are. What's he need? Saren returned him a smile, but it was only affectation. That. What? He's pretending to smile. Okay. Sure. Ah, ah, you're cheating. Smile for real. Really smile. Come on. Saren laughed at his absurdity. Here it is. The real smile is the best. He took in Draco for a long moment until the mage noticed he was under inspection. What? How can you be so happy all the time? Life hasn't been fair to you, and I know you're damaged <laughs> from the effects of that. Wow. But you're always smiling or cheering. How? Everybody deserves to smile. You were born a slave, but you smile sometimes. But... Saren wanted to argue that Draco had more to frown about than him, and then he remembered that he had been literally born a slave. He wanted to point out how Draco himself had almost no self-esteem, that he was constantly ridiculed by Loren, or how Apollo Michaud still didn't trust him fully, even after all this time. But Draco was right. How did someone have to be sad just because sad things happened to them? Perhaps Draco really didn't care, and that was admirable in itself. No, you're right. It was a silly question. I stood silently. It does help, though. Smiling. People usually smile back, and then everyone's smiling, and you have a real reason to smile again. They smiled then, proving the point. Slowly sacrificing the meaning of the word, Saren sighed, sighed inw inwardly. It's okay to show sadness sometimes, too, though. Everyone just tries to cheer you up, though. Just look, at it, look happy and save them the trouble. Draco. Saren pleaded with Draco with his eyes. It hurt him. To think that ignoring his feelings was okay just to save those around him the effort of caring about him. Don't do that with me. Draco let go of his smile. He gets half sometimes. I know. It's okay. Saren grabbed at Draco's shoulder. His hand itched to move to the mage's face, but he pulled back before he gave in to the temptation. Like, I understand what they mean, but my my brain is still just like <laughs> Yeah, grab <laughs> just, it. Just, like grab good. <laughs> Just, just palming his face and being like, romance. 
We're maxing those hearts. Yep. Yep. All right. Amukiki. Let's let's have a weird t- testosterone fueled um, analog for uh, making out. Yeah. So how do you feel about being away from your clan? Amukiki took a deep breath before responding. I wish that I did not have to leave them. It does not feel good to be separated from your family. Yet you have lived well with so- and with much glory. Not enough glory. You mean for the sword? That too. Loren hadn't really done shit. And here I am. It's... It's a thing. What did you originally mean? It was a euphemism. We were speaking of my clan. You thought that if you earned enough fame, your clan would take you back? Becoming the wielder of the Ember Blade may have redeemed me. But that is no longer an option. Saren saw Amokiki with fresh eyes before he considered him just a brute with a lust for battle. When? Under what circumstances did that... Also, like, you've had this exact conversation before. Do you regret your decision that caused you to be exiled? I regret that it had to happen. I do not regret my decision. Even if you had the option of going back now to change your mind, you would not? I would not. But when I was not honored with the Ember Blade, my paths to return were not many. I was tempted to disrobe my honor. (sighs) Disband my honor. What did I say? If you think you can return now, why don't you just do it? I don't know if I can. I'm afraid I'm no longer a nomad. My culture has changed too much. If you can adapt to the city, then you can adapt back. It is more than that. Help me to understand. Why? With the question turned on Saren, he was made speechless. This is my burden, not yours. But I am like you. You're not like no. me. <laughs> no. We're different. I am... I'm Okiki is, is like a burning fire. You, you are like a tiny... You're a like tiny fire. sort of smoldering, yes. It's uh, like <laughs> a raging inferno. I saw that movie on the plane coming back from Scotland, and it was so good. It was, it was pretty fun. I like, it was I, so funny. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> I was born into the Amazons from a foreign father. I have only ever barely belonged there. Yet... I do not think I could return to the Empire if I was given that chance. I have grown so far from what I was supposed to be. Saren had not made their connection until that moment, but now he realized they were both tribeless. Sure. Their devotion to Loren stemmed from the same desire. That's like... If you had like a, a feat opening and you took skill focus in jump and then specialize that additionally to jumping to conclusions <laughs> <laughs> and people were like why would you do that and you were like we're both doing this and they're like no i took power attack you fuck and kiki gave him an understanding look instead of words cute Get those hearts. All right. Ramus. Ramus. All right. The dwarves wow. Are just, the dwarves, dwarves are just, just done. done. <laughs> they have right. nothing left to say. All right, Loren. All right. The Citadel was so weak. The plague crippled us. Loren looked completely, completed unfocused. I'm not going to go with ma'am again, apparently. The Amazons... Uh, have always been prepared for war. We've always been ready and willing and strong. You're worried about your people. Of course I'm worried. I have to rely on my sisters to dictate the tide of the war. What do you think, the humans are going to carry it? I mean, we're kind of human, but not really. But You sound like a real Amazon leader now. Yes. Disrespecting all of the other uh, races. Excuse me, I, I didn't before. I mean, like, now you're concerned about the welfare of your people, yeah, like, where before you were simply a self-absorbed, spoiled grass. It's like, I feel like like her, her remark is accompanied by the little like click sound that, that, that katanas make in anime when they just like thumb them out of their scabbard. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's my fault. 
I let this happen. I should have been there. I could have stopped whoever poisoned us. I could have killed them. I didn't actually read that line. I just ad-libbed it, but that's what it is. Fuck's sake. Forceful? <laughs> really? Joking? We don't want to joke? There was nothing that you could do. It was literally... It was a virus. It was a disease. Listen, I've stabbed very small things. I look, can look, look. access the bloodstream. Look, your expertise was needed for killing the other large physical monster type things. I did do that. Right? You were very good at it. Loren looked away, conceding that she would have gotten sick if she was at the Citadel, but secretly believing that she would have killed the rats responsible before they poisoned anyone. <laughs> Loren looked away, learning nothing. All right, so we're gonna. I want to run it back one more time. All right. I'm super curious about something. Oh God, what? Huh? More fucking conversations? No, no. <laughs> it will never end. <laughs> I was like, it I is... wonder if there's a sequence. Kamara, what do you think you'll do if you when the, this war is over? Anything I want to do. In the free world, I could shut, set up shop and never burn itself. Perhaps start a bakery in Horace. Although, if I do, Misfit is not allowed to work there. Maybe I could be a slave in the Citadel next to you. So this is a joke to you? Yes, we are joking. We are telling jokes now. Of course it's a joke. What have I been wanting to, use to do since you snatched me from the swamp? I want to go back to my hut. Kabara shifted and looked, at, looked Saren dead in the eye. What do you want to know? Romance. Romance. Well, I... Saren's throat suddenly became very dry, staring hey. into the depths of... Kambara's dark eyes. You are so independent, but I have been dependent my whole life. If I knew more about your life outside the war, I could see if it would be a life I'm interested in. If it would a life? Thank you. Uh, a smile slowly curled on the witch's lips. See, you are a lost soul in need of guidance. You've gotten too used to the strict instruction of your Amazons. Don't worry, you will transition very nicely with me. Into a frog. You teach me? I'll teach you everything if you're willing. I'm still not sure about learning dark magic. Shh, we are not talking about dark magic right now. It's a different conversation. Pay attention! If you were smart, you would be sure. Magic is useful and powerful. You will regret pressing this up, I promise. Saren couldn't see himself practicing dark magic, no matter how enticing Kamar made it sound. Mm, yep, yep, alright. It does not matter anyway. You'll still be Lorenz's toy, and she'll shelve you right back into the Citadel. Woo! Our futures don't overlap. Wow. Kamara walks oh. away after that, leaving Saren hopelessly to hopelessly find a response to that, but can't. All right. All right. Sauzer. Sauzer's got nothing. All right. Uh, Mesfit. Mesfit looked away. Thank, Mesfit's thank got God. nothing. Kamara. Fucking hell, we're still going. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, why, oh, why, oh, why? <laughs> why does it never end? Someone's like, why stop at 80,000 words? I saw a box marked with your name in the Magic Academy. Were you there once? <laughs> this game isn't locked in here with you. You're locked in here with it. Unfortunately... Really? Why did you never mention that? Because then I would lose all of my mysterious mystery. Why did you leave for the swamp if you lived in Horus before? <laughs> We're just singing the song that doesn't end in the chat. Because I broke the rules and studied dark magic. Apparently it's real bad. I see. You practice forbidden magic? Literal da. So why are you not dead yet? What? Because I said I used... Say the forbidden magic to make sure that I'm not. They kill witches. Oh, yes. So I realized that a quiet little girl was more than just a troubled child in need of hug. I was an evil abomination up for execution. Dark magic changed them more than it changed me, but I'm the evil one. 
You were going to be executed? Eh, little. I was a child. Kamara laughed. Not very clever either. Poisoned or locked up for my entire life. I, uh, I hope no one got harmed during your escape. I don't kill for fun. I just think death is wonderful. So no, I teleport. Apparently that's pure evil. It let you escape. Evil is in the eye of the beholder. Literal beholders are all 10, 11 evil eyes. That's why I don't live in someone else's rules. Ray? Yay. Yeah, we got there. Alright, Mirth. Mirth. Yep. Oh, it's her character quest. Oh no. We're gonna unlock uh, her character oh, quest. Oh no. Are you okay? I'm not fine. How are you? I sit in my ass for your eating something very important. Oh, for why? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Everyone else has. Now, it's a matter that a forest, a certain tribe is harvesting more than they should be. Harvesting what? That's thrown off the balance of the forest. What the damage that'll take her hundreds of years to mend. What is this tribe doing and why? That's a tribe of Farshid! And the eastern trees, they're logging trees beyond their allowance! And for that reason, I hope there's an explanation other than greed. The elders have sent word there to stop, but they have not done so! Our local druid could, should have kept this from happening. Somewhere has something's happened to her. We will get to the bottom of this. Who want to help me? Ah, oh, thank you. I was worried about facing the tribe alone. I've been a great ally in battle, so I've asked you first. Let me know when we can travel. Let's just do it. All right, we, 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 or do we want to go around? Sure, sure. why not? Karen? All Yay. right, clear. Dora and Ramus are already clear. Yeah. Paul show. Yeah, no, idle chatter. Oh, there uh, we go. No, uh, we haven't done Amokiki's personal quest yet either, did we? Did we not? I thought I, we did some. Anyway. Did we? I don't fucking remember. Alright. Amokiki uh, approached Saren and stared down at him. Yes? I require you. No, we have not. <laughs> <laughs> Saren blinked and looked around. What for? You are the only one here who knows my truth. Your true... Is that another euphemism? That I get easily confused. That I was exiled from my clan. That's something you haven't told anyone? Not even a Paloma show? That man cannot keep his fucking mouth shut. No. Saren suddenly felt honored, but unsure why he was allowed that information. What do you need me for? There is word that the nomads are fleeing the south. They've come north. They're nearby then? And you want to seek them out? Yes. For what purpose? You're exiled. You're not allowed even to go near them. And Wakiki turned away with a grimace. I've asked too much of you. He was going to leave, but Saren stopped him. No, wait. I'll help you however I can. And Wakiki's eyes focused on Saren for a long moment. Long I'm prepared moments. to travel at any time. This game is a series of long moments. All right, let's talk to Drago. Drago! Can we talk to Mesfit? Yes. Yes? I think? No. Yeah. We yes. Okay. Yeah, I just looked away. Hooray! No. Yay. All right, all right. Let's all right. talk to Loren. All right. All right. So, so two personal two quests. Two personal quests. Then into the end game. Almost certainly true. God. Where's uh, Saren? Oh. You just... You, no. Saren, we need to keep... We're just gonna hang out on the left side. Yeah, it seems great. Mirth excused herself from the group to travel deep within the elven forest, but with Saren by her side. They traveled into parts that Saren had never been before. He saw more elven villages, but they grew less and less like the outside world. Grand Tree was the center of trade for the elves, so it was the most influenced by their cultures. However, they were traveling into parts where the elven culture was mostly untouched. That's really interesting world building. Yeah, but we'll have no idea what that looks like. Nope. What near? 
I feel it. The trees thinned to create a clearing ahead. The space was large and filled with tree stumps. Loggers could be seen across the clearing, busy at work. Ah! Stop! No! Mirtha ran across the clearing, wincing in pain. Saren followed. Ah, oh, you've got enough! The loggers were startled and jumped back. Uh, hell's a druid? Why have you cut so much? Can you not see that it's more than your share? Oh, dear. The loggers um. looked toward each other. I've sent word upon word for this logger to see us. Have you not received our messages? The loggers remained silent. They looked over at Saren with hostility. As with me, it is no threat to you. Open your fucking jaw! So, it's true? What did you say? And it looked away without answering. What's your fucking druid? Oh, we don't... Oh. I assume they have an elvish accent. But oh, they... They... Right. I'm here, Merth. <laughs> yes. Please... Please be also an attractive lady. Just to... <laughs> oh, yep. close. We were so close. Yep. Yeah. A flowery elf stepped out of the trees and walked briskly through the front of the loggers. Aga! Tell me, have you received my messages? I left like 15 voicemails! I have! Mercise flared at the druid's audacity. Then it's exactly what we feared. What did we fear? I'm not sure. Iga's eyes burnt, bored into Saren's like hot coals. And I see that I've made the right decision. Mirth held an arm in front of Saren protectively. You have no authority to judge this man. He's a dear friend. One that respects this forest more than the elves I see here. You have one chance to explain yourself before I bring you before the elders. Mirth? The perspective's doing weird things here. Mirth is enormous. Right? For my punishment, I should be rewarded. I like the druid Iga just sounds like fat bastard. As much as you try, you cannot make me feel to a fool for seeing what you refuse to see. Now what does that mean? Iga stepped out of the way and the loggers pounced forward on her command. What's happening? We are fighting. Alright, Elf Battle Mage A. Yeah, let's make that one not be alive. Um... We can go for the slow, or we can... No, we can go for the kill. <laughs> we can kill, yeah. Yeah, that's kill, kill. Wow. Yay. Yay. The elves did not succeed. The hero was standing back, far back, watching with disappointment. How could you make them do such a thing? Argo, oh, I said be this way. Why are you fighting? Look beside you. Look at your new favorite ally. It's like my third favorite ally. Mirth looked at Saren with confusion. A human! What? Why should that... On, like, I understand that you don't like me, but what does that have to do with you fucking cutting down too many trees? Right? You're a druid. It's, it's not what this is about. Yeah, you're one of the isolationists. You're fucking cutting down trees to build a moat. Let's not have moats. I forget the blood. So I guess retention walls? Retaining walls? It, well, also to have space, I guess, to, like, make a moat. Uh, oh, fair. All right. We all are. This is... This is part of the forest's heritage and our only means of survival. We get it. You're, you're cutting down. You're, you're gonna build a wall. You see what's happened when worlds cross and now we're at war. I'm only doing my part to protect the forest. It's clear now that this would take more than diplomacy to resolve. You brought me to the Siga. More elves appeared from the trees and stood behind the druid. No, you've brought this to yourself. God. Seems so good. Alright, so the druid Iga. Um. Alright, so Sarah. Yeah, let, yeah let's, let's kill that battle mage. Alright, Mirth. Um, you've got. Yeah, the, that's. They kill everybody, yeah, yeah. That's gonna definitely. Saren, yeah, kill, kill, the, kill the guy. Uh. 
Yeah, because we he gets to go. Oh, actually, oh, he's tired. Oh, inflicts 26 points of damage. Not enough. Um. Yeah, and now you can. And now I'm sure that we've got. Yeah, that'll do. Yep. Yay! Oh my god, Saren leveled up. No points. Yay. Yay. Traitor! Traitors to the forest! You're walking. Inga was wounded, but still standing. Surrender! Please! Instead, Inga summons vines to cover her escape. The tendrils wove a thick wall between her and them. Even though Mirth was able to ward the vines away almost immediately, the druid had made her escape. We have to catch her. Mirth and Saren bolted after her, whipping through the trees at breakneck speeds. Mirth continued to shout for Inga to stop, but she didn't listen. They ran until they stumbled into an elven village, and all trace of Vega had disappeared. The local elves were startled to see the Elder Druid, especially with an outsider. A quick glance showed exactly why these elves needed so much wood. Barrels of bows and arrows were everywhere. Weapons! That's just why you're over-harvesting! That's actually a pretty good reason there's a war yeah. on! We're gonna yeah. fight demons! Yeah. Why does this one town need this many weapons? Smells retreated into their homes, but some became aggressive and walked toward Mirth and Saren. Like, Mirth is basically the elf pope, right? Yeah. Like, it seems really weird. Well, we're witnessing the Reformation. Hmm. We have for true, nigga. Not for any of you. Stand down. Vega does not stand alone. Another druid appeared, scowling. I cannot believe it. Are there more of you? There are, we are many, and we stand against your tyranny. The forest is being corrupted, and we'll not say idly by as it fills. And we are thinking harms the forest more than you realize. We are the true protectors of the wield. You are no longer needed. Verdiga reappeared. She looked worse than before, but her spirit had not been broken. We can live peacefully with other cultures! Only if we allow them to consume their own. Ah, this is wrong. You can be right. Learn them from each other will help our society to grow. This is our land. All of the others must find their own way. If the forest becomes as you want... Oh, it's episode. Oh. So if the forest becomes as you want, where will our history go? Our traditions? What will be in an elf even mean? Social commentary. We will lose our identity because you couldn't control your emotions. Also because of a giant terrifying demon army. Mirth gasped and looked away, deeply hurt. You are simply afraid of change. Witness is evil, yes. I think I made sure the word evil cut through Saren as sharply as it could. As the elder threw it. Hereby declare Druid Iga and Druid Ibisan is threats to the forest. Declare what you will. The people will not let you get away with this. Therefore, must be eliminated on sight. The rogue druids glowered in anticipation. So says the forest. Ooh, boy. Alright, so we've got Iga and Ibisad. Yeah, we just do this like we did before. Yeah. Um. Yep. Yep. Uh, we just beat down. Oh, we just, yep. we're on the beat down. No, no, no. He can kill her. Oh, she goes next, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. now, now it's just the end of whatever. Yeah. Mm, that's not a kill. Do we want to go for single the... target stuff? Do anything? Just no, that's hers weird. don't work like yeah, that. Okay. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe. Slow, we'll, sure. Yeah, we want to go for the slow. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's bone. Oh, he's, he he healed though. Hmm. I mean, it's not really doing any favors, but the stick. Yay. 
Earth closed her eyes to keep her from seeing what she'd done. Iga moaned and twitched. Saren walked over to her and knelt down. I can heal you. Don't touch me! Saren shook his head in disappointment. I cannot do anything for them if they do not want it. I should report this to the elders at once. A small village was left to deal with their fallen druids as Mirth led Saren back toward Grand Tree. There, the elders circle meant, meant to discuss the threat of the isolationists and how best to deal with them. Though some elders agreed with the extremists, it was agreed that Mirth had taken the right action or the right course of action to stop the logging. A new druid would be assigned to that part of the forest, and the weapons would be confiscated to help with the front lines rather than their private rebellion. To give Mirth more authority, the elders bestowed Mirth with a symbolic staff. Now all the forest would know who was really its protector. The Staff of Piety. Alright, camp away. Mirth. Yeah, yeah, better. yeah, that's just straight better. Right on. Oh, right, that that bugged out quest that we can't do because we killed Mother Mort. Mm. Uh, all right, so we will do Ammo Kiki's quest. Yep. And then we'll call it for the night. Okay, yep. Yeah. Because uh, it's 9.30. Mm -hmm. And we both have to work in the morning. So the next... And then next time... We do the end game. Seriously, we will do the end game. God, why? Why does it never end? Nice. Saren prepared to search for Amokiki's clan with him. Loren gave her two bodyguards permission to leave, knowing that both would both would see that they each returned. Sure, that that that, that makes sense. Amokiki was usually only burdened with his weapon and armor, but now he was carrying a heavy-looking bag on his back. Who was that? <laughs> Food. The nomads have fled north out of fear, and have left their herds behind. He was worried for his clan, even though they shunned him. Saren thought about what Amokiki meant to do once he found his clan as they left camp. They knew they'd be sending several nights of sleep in the fields. The plains were expansive, but you could see far. No nomads were in sight. That night, they made a fire. Amokiki opened the sack of food and shared it. They'd been mostly silent the whole time, but Saren had questions. Why have you told no one of your exile? It is not necessary to know. How was it necessary that I know? Emukiki paused. You are the protagonist. You questioned my loyalty and pride. You needed to see that I am deep in both. You are very prideful indeed. Wow, oh, it's savage. Emukiki's brow furrowed. Behind him, Saren spotted movement. Shadow shadowy figures were creeping up on them. Watch out! Saren sprung to his feet and tossed Emukiki his weapon. The gladiator grabbed it and spun around to meet their attackers. Th these fights are going to be like the grindiest shit. <laughs> we don't hurt anything! The orcs screeched from having been discovered, but charged them anyway. Unfortunately, they didn't know what kind of battle was in store for them. Oh yep. my god. This is the grindiest. Oh, right. We're staring. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm with PG. Fear. Uh, like the 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 upside being like they don't take yeah apparently they don't oh he's paralyzed they're both paralyzed aren't they uh, no I thought we gave Emukiki a... no he's afraid he's afraid yeah because Emukiki is immune to para paralysis yeah. Right. Realized. Yeah, like they don't take any damage, but Yeah. The orcs were slain. It was only a strong a small group, likely on patrol. No more fires or more will come for us. Amukiki bent down and expected the ragged clothing on the orc corpses. He touched their weapons and accessories with horror. What's wrong? 
These were made by nomad hands. Nobukiki stood up and looked back at Saren with unmasked fear. They're preying on the clans. Saren steeled himself. There would be no rest tonight. Let's go. They took off from their campsite and spent the night of the morning and the morning traversing the plains as efficiently as they could. Last they saw a horde of orcs and heard faint screams. They ran for the orcs even though they were still so far away. The orcs were more than happy to wait. All right, let's do it all again. They're uh -huh. identical. All right. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. So paralyzed. There we go. Yay. When the orcs were cleared, they saw all that remained. People of a barbaric culture were strewn across the field. This nomad clan did not survive. Amukiki was speechless. They desperately searched each person, but found not a single survivor. Rough. Yeah. The gladiator could not contain his despair any longer and fell to his knees. Saren's throat went to his went dry as he watched Amukiki Chuckly shut his eyes and shake. Saren felt a stabbing pain in his chest just above his heart. He looked down to find the arrow. Uh, the sight wasn't a comfortable walk to watch by any means. A silence was filled by the sound of an army coming over the hill. It was not an army. It was another group of nomads. They were shocked to see the bloody field, and then enraged. Amokiki rose to greet them, but the nomads assumed that they were responsible for the slaughter rather than all the dead orcs. Yeah, that seems, uh... Nomads attacked for vengeance. Alright, let's grind this out. That was, looks exactly the same as the uh, other group. Oh, because they hit harder. Or Amokiki might could use a little bit of a... I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, hit more. And they have higher defense. Alright, let's heal up. Let's click our way to victory. Whee! Gameplay. I mean, this is basically Diablo. Yeah, actually. Like, the difference is the targets don't move. I don't have to click a potion button as well as my attack button. Loud and repetitive grunting slowed the attacks of the nomads, and they started pulling back as even more nomads came over the hill. Amukiki acted as a shield to Saren, protecting him from the great mass. The grunts were coming from the largest man of the group. He stopped, and the warriors returned to the top of the hill. I saw Black Panther. I know how this goes. I haven't yet, so I'm excited. Oh, dude. It, I, I understand. It's super good. They stared at Amukiki and Saren for a long time. Amukiki finally understood. We must leave. He led Saren in the opposite direction of the clan and traveled to a safe distance. This allowed the clan to deal with their people. They recovered the dead bodies and prepared them for the traditional nomad burial. Saren and Amukiki watched for many hours as the clan gathered stone to cover the bodies. Even though Saren had seen enough, Amukiki wasn't moved. He stood on the hill and watched the nomads ever intently. In the valley, he could see that they were being watched as well. Some warriors kept a close eye on them, but so did a few children and an older woman. While Amukiki watched, Saren retrieved a sack of food that Amukiki had dropped a short while back. Do we give them this now? Amukiki took in a long breath. Yes, all of it. But I cannot go. He gently took Saren's hands and opened them so their, his palms faced outwards. Approach like this. Saren could hear the frailty in the gladiator's voice. I will. He slipped the food on his back and walked slowly down the hill toward the nomads. Those of them that were watching grew defensive and some children ran away. But halfway there, the older woman that was watching started to grunt in panic. 
stepping back. Did they not use words? Why did they all grunt? I have no fucking idea. That's so weird. Yeah. The largest man in the clan was quick to find his way in front of her. He protected her in a similar fashion that Amokiki had just protected Saren. He was sure to hold his hands open to show he was weaponless. I come in peace. They did not attack. Saren was afraid to move again. Instead, he retrieved the sack of food and opened it. A small group of nomads advanced to see what he'd brought. By now, the entire clan had stopped to stare at him. Inside the sack was fruit and dried meat. The nomad's eyes lit up at seeing food, as if they hadn't had any for a long time. He noticed the older woman and her mate were still... Mate. Ugh. 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 Animals have mates. Yeah. These, are these not people? They were glancing at Amukiki up on the hill. A small boy clinging to the woman's leg, however, was looking right at Saren. Saren looked over his shoulder to see Amukiki waiting on the hill, but his forlorn was clear, look was clear even from this distance. He looked back toward the nomads. He misses you very much. Their eyes grew sad. The warriors took the sack of food and the entire clan gathered around it. The largest nomad stood silently next to the woman. He felt that his time was up, and that he'd done what they came for, so he turned to leave. You. Saren was surprised to hear the large man speak. Uh, give, please. Pulled off a mighty shield from his back. He looked at it once before thrusting it at Saren. Uh, sorry, give it to who? Literal duh. Uh, please, give it to Amukiki. Yeah. <laughs> Theron smiled and took the shield with a nod. He traveled back up the hill and presented the, sh the shield to Amukiki. Why do you have this? They miss you too. Amukiki took the great man's shield with awe. It was battle-worn and primitively made, but the hieroglyphics adorned it to show that it meant more, much more than just a shield. <laughs> Amukiki took his last glance at the nomads as he put his shield on his back. The large man and the woman turned away to share the food. And Mukiki started walking away with much effort. Saren walked beside him. And you have a brother. Gladiator slowed to a stop. He looked over at Saren. His eyes were full of longing, but at the same time, content. But with content. <laughs> Likely just as prideful. I hope so. It is time to return. I have your back. It is quite a back. Saren hadn't appreciated how far Amokiki had come from his roots, though he rarely spoke. He spoke fluently. After a meeting with the nomads, it was clear why Amokiki would be offended to learn that his people were called barbarians. They didn't live like the rest of the world, but they were as rich a culture as any other. On their trip back to Loren, Amokiki told the Saren the tale of his life after exile. He was seen as an inferior brute, and had worked demeaning labor for no pay. Social commentary. But at times when Amokiki spoke of the gladiator arena showed how much he valued that part of his life. It was likely the only way he garnered respect from the Empire, so to explain why he worked so hard to maintain it. More social commentary. Saren felt that he had truly come to know Amokiki and why he was so steeped in pride, because without it, Amokiki wasn't his parents' son. And Saren wondered why Amokiki felt he could tell him something he considered so private. Yay, shield, shield of, of the, the bear. bear! All right, let's go to camp. Go to camp. On the shield. Save our game. Are you sure you don't want to click on some more people at camp? I want to die. Shield of the bear. Strictly superior. Strictly better. Awesome. Could Save. We... we could just click on somebody. Oh my god, are we actually? I have a feeling. Mm. That tonight's gonna be a long night. Oh man. Oh. 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 <laughs> now I'm just doing it to torment you. I gotta I gotta be honest. What are your thoughts on being dead? <laughs> you know how I feel. It's not so bad. Of course, being a necromancer. It's the same thing for anyone who believes in life after death. At least see them, right? 
you believe such a paradise exists, you're like me. I just don't need religion as a middle step to comfort in passing. Pretend the social commentary. What do you believe happens when you die? I don't pretend to know. I do know. We fall into Underrealm without eternity there. The magic of that world will keep us quite busy. Underrealm? That does not sound like somewhere I would like to spend eternity. I don't know. Could spend eternity in my Underrealm. Is what you make it. For some people, it's a terrible place. But only because they brought that terror with them when they died. I believe I've lived quite a content life. My eternity will be quite pleasant. What will your eternity be, hmm? I hope it's pleasant as well, and I wish the same for you. No need to wish. I am fine. But but I, I wonder, if what you say is true, can two people meet up in the Underrealm? Share an eternity? Oh, in the burning fires of hell? Yes, he's up for it. It's called Tinder. I regret nothing. It is probably possible. Never thought about it. But if we're all going to the same place, probably find each other if we wanted. Sarah and Kumbara hold eye contact for a moment. Then you're right. Death is not so frightening after all. Wow. Nice. Okay. All right. Now, we have exhausted all possible conversations. Oh. Let's save our game. Let's do the thing we only do once. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Oh. I'm, I'm curious about one thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap right after this. All right. How many hours have we clocked in Loren Amazon Princess? Oh, probably twice as many. Twenty seven hours. Oh. Rich okay. has spent almost all that time with us. Why do you find this enjoyable? <laughs> all right. Thanks for hanging out. We're gonna go offline. <laughs> Take it easy.